so while they're getting set up, I'll uh, I'll introduce uh, myself and my business partner, Neil Schwartz. Talk a little bit about what we're going to talk about today. So uh, first of all, Neil and I are both proud Syracuse grads many years ago. Uh, we were here in the late, we were here 79, 80, around there. Both went to Syracuse, didn't know each other, and reconnected later in life, and uh, just recently ended up buying this business together. So it's called SBR Net, Sports Business Research Network. And what it is, is it's, uh, we aggregate sports data from all over, uh, all different sorts of categories. Everything from sales and merchandise, footwear, apparel, gear, participation data, how many people play pickleball between the ages of 14 and 24? Uh, you know, how many people play tennis? How many people play golf? We have all that information on the site. And really our calling card, I think what we're known for is we have fan behavior data. So how do fans behave? And um, this past year, when we did that study, that's proprietary research that we do, it was super interesting to try and figure it out because in the year 2020, how do you measure fan behavior when fans can't do the thing that is most important to them, which is attending games and going to games? So we have a ton of data on the site about um, how did fans engage with their favorite teams and their favorite sports when they couldn't go to games? So we have great information on uh, gambling, uh, great information on fantasy sports, great information on esports and uh, streaming data, and how all that stuff really changed dramatically in 2020 versus 2019. All you students at Syracuse have access to this data for free through the college library. The college library subscribes to it. I know the professors, your professors use this data a lot. So I would encourage you guys to go poke around on the site. I'm sure there's a lot of valuable stuff for you. And if you can't find what you're looking for, email Neil and he'll, he'll help you find it. So you ready to go? Absolutely. So uh, first, uh, I'm gonna stand, I'll stand back up for about a minute because I'm going to see that I've been talking so much that I'm thinking I'm gonna fall asleep from the carbon dioxide. Um, as Mark said, I'm Neil Schwartz, and uh, Mark and I are partners with uh, Sports Market Analytics and SBRNet. Um, we're having a little bit of a schizophrenic moment right now, deciding what we want to do, but long term, we're headed to SBRNet, so we figured it was time to bite the bullet. Hey, if Coke, before the time, you know, Coke, New Coke, all that, they decide to kind of bite the bullet, guess what? We have to get to along not Coke at all. But, um, you know, what I, again, I'd like to thank also Dr. Lesak for inviting us and also being a really instrumental part in getting us involved in general um, with the folks here at Syracuse. Um, I cannot tell you, words do not describe how impressed I have been with many of the students I've met. In fact, two of the students work for us this summer. Um, anybody here know Alex Borelli? How about Patrick uh, Preston Klaus? Everybody seems to know Preston, nobody knows Alex. Well, Alex and Preston work for us this summer as interns. They really wanted to get some, you know, real life grassroots experience, and that's what we gave them. Because, you know, you're learning a lot of great things here. Dr. Westock's teaching you a lot of great, you know, principles and a lot of great things that you will be able to put into practice. But, you know, putting things into practice again, and I'll give you a quick example. Mark said we do this giant survey, and we do. Every year we do this giant survey um, of sports fans. Now, how do you do a survey on sports fans when nobody goes to games? It's probably the, one of the biggest components. Can't go to games. So we had to kind of rework the survey. We had to rework the data. We had to rework even our thinking. But once we were done and we got the data back, we noticed we also had a little bit of an issue about how we wanted to represent the data, visualize the data. Because, you know, it's one thing to present great numbers. It's another thing to tell a story with great numbers. And that's where what will differentiate you from others that are out there looking for the same jobs. Because you know what? There's a lot of smart kids at Wash University in St. Louis. A lot of smart kids at GW. A lot of smart kids at Ohio University. I know because they're working for us as interns. So you're going to have to find a way to differentiate yourself. You're gonna to have to find a way 
how to use data differently, let's say, than even your own classmates. And what's that really process, um, you know, going to entail? Um, as, as Mark said, we are both graduates of Syracuse University. We both graduated the same year. Uh, we both graduated in 1979. The school that we graduated from has no resemblance to what, we, what I saw walking across the quad today and walking from the shirt. And the it's, it's an amazing, you know, you are in an amazing setting. Um, you are in an amazing situation and you have some amazing instructors. Amazing instructors. Some of the best I've met so far um, as we move this. But I think what we want to talk about today is, and I'm going to try to give you a heads up on this. I use that kind of point and flip method when it comes to teaching. What does that mean? I'm going to point to some of you if you don't. I'm going to ask a question. And if nobody you know, raises their hand or says that you don't want to talk about it, then I'm going to just ask somebody to answer. And if you don't answer, look, don't, I'm, not try, I'm not here to embarrass anybody. I'm not here to, you know, I'm not here to make any, I'm here to try to help us learn from one another. Because you know what? I have 26 experience, 26, 26 years of experience in market research. I like to believe I'm somewhat of a, I don't know, the right word, I think that word. But some, I'm someone that people frequently look on to understand data, to acquire data, to use data, to understand data. But you know what they really like? Neil, tell us a story with the data, because that's what people want. People don't care how the sausage is made. They don't. What they care about, how does the sausage taste? Can I sell my sausage for more money than the other guy selling sausage? Does my sausage taste better than the other guy selling sausage? And why? But nobody cares you know, that we double grind our, you know, uh, pork part or, you know, whatever, whatever. They don't care. But what they care about is the story that comes out the other end. And that's really what I want to focus on today is how do we get to the story? Jeremy, uh, excuse me, Dr. Les, let me ask you a question. Most of you are Freshmen, sophomores, what's the? You're all sophomores. How many of you played sports um, back in high school or even back? Well, how many of you play sports now? I mean, sports at a, let's say, at an elite level or at a travel level or club level. How's that? Let's go back to high school. Let's do that. Thank you. <laughs> what's your first name? Where is it? Eric. Eric, where are you from? From Grand Rapids, Connecticut. Nice. What sport did you play when you were in high school? I played water polo. Really? Did you travel for, uh, were you on like a, a travel team? Yeah. Yeah, they didn't actually didn't even have that kind of stuff. <laughs> actually, they even had some of my daughters playing sports. How many different places did you travel to over the course of, I don't know, a year or two? Like, okay. Like Wow. When you get out of school, how many of you think you're going to get a job in sports to start or hope to get a job in sports? I have a back question. How many? I hope to see everybody. Almost everybody. Okay. How many of you think you're going to be able to get a job, let's say, I don't know, with the New York Mets or the Los Angeles Dodgers and the New York Giants or the New York Knicks or the Philadelphia Flyers or any of those things <laughs> up in Philadelphia, by the way? Anybody think that that's where, you know? What's your first name? Peter. Where are you from, Peter? I'm from outside of Westchester. Okay, I'm, I'm from uh, the other side, Cheltenham. Okay, yeah, yeah. So I'm also a Philly boy. Fact is, and I hate to burst anybody's bubble, chances are you're not going to work for the New York Mets or the Philadelphia Phillies or any pro teams. It's just not where people start. It's just not. Where people start are places like, I forget your first name. Eric. Eric. Are places like where Eric engaged in. Eric was on the water polo team and they traveled and they went to Texas. They went to Los Angeles. Has anybody ever heard of something called a sports commission? Anybody? What's your first name? Ben. Ben? Oh, ben. Oh, ben, where are you from? Nashville. 
Cool. Well, tell me a little bit about what you know to your own what, what is a sports commission? Sure. There are, I think the last time I counted, over 625 sports commissions here in the United States. That's more than all of the pro teams combined. And also more, I wrote more than minor league teams combined added in. So this is a great opportunity. And guess what they need? Data. Why do they need data? Because I'll bet you there were all sorts of different places that were vying to get that water polo championship that out, right? that Eric went to. But they had to figure out, what data do I use? How do I find data that maybe is different from, you know, what Cleveland might have tried to do in the world of Cleveland, probably a bad example of that, so I'd say Texas or Los Angeles, but you know what I mean. I'm, I'm, you know, don't, don't quote me. Anybody else from Cleveland, I love you guess Cleveland. So, it really becomes down to the data. You know, the first word in data analytics and data analysis and data driven decision making. That's by the way, I love that expression. Data driven decision making. That's what you all should be looking towards. How do I use data to drive the decision making process? But also, what is my process? As you all are sophomores, I guess, how many of you did a, some sort of a project of some sort last year at some point or wrote a paper or something like that? Anybody have a, what's your first name? Uh, Jackson. Hey, Jackson, what's going on? Uh -huh. Where are you from? Uh, Maine. So tell me a little bit about the paper that you did last year. So we did a project, uh, not, not a total paper, but mm -hmm. it was about projecting uh, international basketball league success, like bringing players over to the NBA to the draft. Interesting. How'd you, what, tell me, tell me what you did. Tell me what, tell, give me a little, give us a little insight about what, how you did what you did. But then I also want to hear a little bit about the story you told. We gathered uh, NBA draft data over the last two decades and also organized the players by international league, like Euro League, Chinese Basketball Association, things like that. And then we looked at career, um, like advanced statistics to try to rank those players and see how the skills translated from each league. Now, did you layer the data on top of, of itself or did you allow each data to compartmentalize and deal with each situation um, on its own? Uh, I think we left more of it to compartmentalize mm -hmm. as opposed to layering on top of itself. Well, there's nothing wrong with either one of those. What was the final story that you told? I think the main point was that it's easier for players to come over from the Euro League and have an impact than from the smaller leagues such as like the Adriatic League and yeah, just the different ones in the leagues. You know, that's really uh, that to me, you know, he told a story and what did he do? He told us a little bit about how he got there, the GPS of it, the direction, but then told us about what the destination looked like. So he really was able to tell a story. Well, look, I'm not here to, let's say, promote SBRNet, but SBRNet is the tool that basically provides you with the raw materials to do that data analysis. You can't do data analysis without data. It just doesn't happen. And there's all sorts of different kinds of data and all sorts of ways. And I'd love to talk a little bit about process. Let's see if I can get back to something a little bit bigger. By the way, I'll give everybody a good laugh. So, as I said, Mark and I both went to Syracuse back in, uh, graduated in 1979. On the left is my um, is my picture from uh, my uh, student ID. On the right is Mark. As you can tell, hanging out. Things were a little bit. Uh, we all looked a little bit different then. I, I was working really hard on that photo. I don't know if that got me across, but trust me, I got it. Thank God they didn't have camera phones back then, or we all would have taken a picture of it. Let me try to get to something uh, real quickly. 
Um, yeah, so. so I talked a little bit about process. I am a big process guy. I am a big process guy because I believe if you get your process right, step one, it will lead you to second step, which is to collect finding the data that I need in order to accomplish my process. I am a big, big process guy. And I have to tell you, a lot of this I learned, oddly enough, Syracuse University, Slocum Mall, marketing like 205 or whatever it was. Because I learned that there are what I like to call these universal questions. You know, it's not the meaning of life. It's not, you know, whether there's a God or no, but it's not that. But for us, it's all about being able to answer certain questions in the process. You know, tell me a little bit about your process when you were looking at you know where players you know were better off coming from. Well, initially, a lot of it was about gathering data, mm -hmm. so we kind of had to go through each draft manually to find the international players that were drafted, mm -hmm. just because I didn't know if there was an easier way, and we had to organize them by league after that, and then. It was about gathering data on their NBA careers after that. Mm -hmm. But we had to figure out how much we wanted to um, weight their performance prior to being drafted and then post being drafted to like show their overall impact and transition between leagues. That's a good process. That's a great process, in fact. So the process for me, frankly, and it took me a long time to get this because. I wanted to go right to the end of the story. Frankly, I'm, you know, I'm type A. I'm uh, very. Uh, I have attention deficit disorder. I don't seem to have time for necessarily the nuts and bolts of a lot of things. I can't put stuff together. I mean, my wife and I argue all the time. We buy a chair and I got to put it together. Usually, I have to let her do tell me what to do and I just do it because I just don't. That's just not how I'm made or how I'm fit. But what I learned is that. The process starts somewhere. The journey starts somewhere. And using SBRNet, the process, in my feeling, always starts right up here in the upper right-hand corner called search. And why? Because I'm going to even put in a really general search term. Let's spell it right there. That's it. I type in basketball. Now, you can't think of anything probably more general but when you do that, it starts, remember, I like to look at things almost like a funnel. And I want to throw as much at the top of the funnel as I can. And so what I want to do is I want to use SBRNet. Why? One, it'll first give you access to relevant articles uh, that have, you know, that have basically football in it, or basketball, excuse me, in the keyword. And there's a lot of, let's try to scroll it. So again, this gives you all of the relevant articles. We have a team of people that are literally scouring all of the great sports marketing media content out there. And there is so much. We'll talk about that in a second also. But we also let you know relevant research that we have. You know, what, what cities, what teams, what, you know, where's the market share at? Minor league baseball, minor league, we cover 17 sports with our research, um, our team and fan research. So we have all of the major domestic sports, and then um, I think internationally, we only have oh, soccer. soccer, race car. Right, right. And, you know, we probably are going to add some other, you know, next year, I think we're going to try to uh, make our sample size a little bit larger and add some other activities. But and then we give you relevant directories. So why do we do it this way? Well, number one, articles are a great place to start. What are people talking about? What are people writing about? What are the issues? And then you, know, you may have to go through a bunch of these in order to find what you need. Good question. What kind of data is out there? What are these dudes at SBRNet? What do they have that might be relevant that I can use? You know, at each one of these things.
So these are our NBA attendance figures. Now, it doesn't relate to Jackson. Doesn't relate to Jackson's specific story, but it does relate to my story about process and about your story. What's your first name? Colin. Where are you from, Colin? Uh, Scranton, Pennsylvania. Great. So you, it's a short drive for you to go home. Get your yeah. laundry done. Go see mom and dad. I get it. But again, it's all about my process. What data do they have available on SPR? Guys, this is free. The Jeremy's department, Jeremy's team, I'm sorry, Dr. Lossack's team pays for this. You're paying for it. I guess I do it. You know, one penny out of your tuition is probably going to me. Um, but again, the idea is that there's so much data out there. So one, the first thing we looked at was articles. Most cases, very, what I like to call anecdotal or qualitative. Does everybody know the difference between qualitative data and quantitative data? I see a lot of head nods. So Superman here, well, tell me what's your first name? Hey, where are you from, Hayden? I'm from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Oh, guys, you guys put on quite this show this past weekend with the Ryder Cup. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, I was, I was so, I've been to Milwaukee many times. Oh, really? I, I have. It's a great city. I even like the Rocklers. <laughs> so tell me the difference between quantitative and qualitative. Qualitative is you know, like both of their words and quantitative. I think that's right in the general sense. True. Qualitative is, is what I like to call the squishy stuff. You know, what I like, um, you know, what I prefer, um, what I've seen. I tell a funny qual 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 qualitative story about a meeting with the CEO of uh, Rawlings Sporting Goods, a brand you may or may not have heard. If you play baseball, you know who Rawlings is. But I went to a meeting and I did something probably I shouldn't have done. Go figure. And I asked the CEO if he knew what the top, his top five best selling products were. And he writes it down on the list, he hands it to me, and I said, Well, you got two of them out of the five, right? He's like, You're kidding. I was like, No. He said, Well, I was just talking to the manager over at Dick Sporting Goods over in, in St. Louis, in like Chesterfield, it's the suburbs. And he said, This particular model is selling like gangbusters. Guess what? Was it? Anecdotal data from one person. Be very careful with qualitative. There is, by the way, a place for qualitative data. For my money, it's a great place to confirm what I may or may not believe. It's a great place. Does anybody here understand the term smell test? Anybody? Sometimes when I get data produced and look at it, I say something doesn't look right to me. Data always to me has to pass the spell test. Does it seem right? Look, I may be wrong, and I actually was wrong a couple of times, a couple of weeks ago on something. But so it's got to pass. So I use anecdotal data. That was the wrong time. About five minutes. Ouch. It's ten fifty. It's ten fifty. So you guys can keep talking, but it is ten fifty. No, I'll, I'll stop. But the last thing are on the directories. And the reason why we include this is that if you're doing something on basketball, you know what? You might want to reach out to somebody in the basketball business and see if you can get them on the phone or get an email back. And in fact, we can help you with that too, because a number of things that we provide here is something new. It's called the Resource Center. This is specifically for you. What do we do? We provide a number of content media podcasts. Um, SPR in the classroom for the faculty. My first job in sports. If you're not watching our the video version and or listening to the audio version of my first job in sports, you're not serious about getting a job in sports. I will tell you that right now. Why? Because there we interview not CEOs, but we interview people that sat right where you were two and three jobs ago. And we, understand, we learn from them how they got their job. 
What are the skills that they learned that helped them get a job? What are the things that they learned that helped them get a job? What are the things that they didn't learn that they wished that they had learned? A um, couple other things are really important. Also, we've got this um, top people to follow on social media. You know, check this out. We've also got a list of publications. You know, to be found. So, I know a lot of people have things to go. I'm sorry. Some of them have to walk across campus in the next five minutes. I get it. I totally get it. I totally, totally. Well, if you guys want more from him later, they'll have okay, so the info session later this afternoon. Yes. Also, I, I know a lot of people say this, but if you're working on a project, you get, you know, uh, Dr. Lewis, I think, and like, you're not really sure where to start. You know what? Neil from SBRnet said, send me an email and I'll help you. You know what? Send me an email and I'll help you. A lot of people say, hey, I'm here to help you, and they really want I, on the other hand, am. I'm not saying you're going to get a 20 word, just, you know, 20 sex dissertation, but if you say, hey, we're doing a project on X, where do you think I should go on SBRnet or on Sports Park and Analytics to kind of get started? You know, I will give everyone the benefit of the time and expertise. Uh, Dr. Wilson, thanks for having me speak. I could have talked for hours, as you know. But thank you, everybody. Have a good day.